So I'm here actually in my capacity as um, the Managing Director of 17 Seconds and Culture in Health. So I'm a GP by background, spent many years in health professionals education for Health Education England and more recently NHS England. Um, but I have an education and training company and we were asked last year by NHS England commissioned to develop a cultural competence training package specifically for the line managers of internationally educated uh, allied health professionals, nurses and midwives and I want to tell you about that today so but I'm going to start with some stories from some internationally educated colleagues. When I came in it was like you know snowing and it was really really cold so the climate was really amazing. I haven't seen snow for you know it was the first time I was seeing that so it was really amazing. So I remember stepping out from coming out from the airplane and it was really cold. <laughs> Yeah, so the weather, of course, the weather, there was a huge change. Oh, it was very gloomy and um, by evening 3 p.m. Oh, everything will be in darkness and it was a new experience for me. Sometimes you feel quite lonely, to be honest, really. Yeah, you feel, yeah, what am I doing here? How should I be just going back home? A bit difficult in the start, obviously, with the um, um, trying to adjust, being lonely. Um, you miss your parents, you miss your family, you miss your friends as well. Being lonely became one of the major things when I got here, so I hadn't really thought about that before I moved. So a newly married couple, so I've been leaving behind my wife, uh, their family, and my mother, everyone as I'm um, leaving behind. Can't explain how that feeling was. Figuring out which bank, which bank would give me an account, because I did not have accommodation proof or any IDs when I came in, so finding that, um, which sim worked best for me, being an international good to call back home, stuff like that, how to go about supermarkets, get things sorted, all of that. Sometimes when I got on the bus, I had to confirm that, that was the right bus I was using because there were times where I was on the wrong side of the street, <laughs> on the wrong bus though. So I had to let the, um, the driver know. Sometimes I let them know that I really don't know the bus stuff I'm going to get off at. So if I press the wrong one and it's not me, I'm really sorry. So it's not just about um, um, learning about the profession, learning about um, the do's and don'ts of the hospital. It's about how to actually um, acclimatize in the UK. Something, um, some personal problems as well to teach you, uh, for example, how to get a driver's license. You can't learn that in the hospital, but at the same time, you can learn that from other people. The the food, it was completely different, you know, the, the breakfast and things, you know, sometimes I, I feel like I miss my masalas and everything. I think I got like um, a bacon sandwich with with um, some orange juice. So I was like, yeah, that this this looks nice and it tasted nice. And it's that was um, one concern <laughs> out of the way because I was bothered I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't find something that I could eat, yeah. Now I know the difference between tea and proper tea because in the philippines we have iced tea and it's basically like a powdered drink so when it came here it was like a proper tea bag and everything i was like for us that was for me in the philippines that was very posh and a bit alien but when it came here it's like every every two hours my colleagues here in the hospital uh in the ward would usually can I have tea let's go for a tea break let's go for a coffee break we don't usually have that in the philippines as well so those are videos um, from the course where we had conversations um, with internationally educated colleagues about their lived experience of coming to the NHS and working in the NHS. And the reason uh, for needing this course, I think Geeta set it up really well and shown that cultural competence is at the heart really of, of some of the solutions to some of the issues we have with the experience that our internationally educated colleagues have when they work in the NHS. And we know that cultural competence makes a difference um, in promoting cross-cultural communication, reducing conflict, enhancing professional development. So that was the reason for the commission behind this training. And I just want to acknowledge the team that helped us uh, to develop this, which included uh, two internationally educated colleagues that helped lead the development of this work. So we started with some stakeholder engagement in autumn of 2022. Um, held a number of webinars, uh, had a lot of one-to-ones with colleagues and we had uh, an engagement website and feedback portal. And then in January we held a one-day co-production design workshop with uh, line managers, internationally educated colleagues and others to really come up with the outline of the programme.
And the aims of the programme were that we would develop culturally competent leaders who were able to create safe and supportive environments where cultural differences are shared and understood, which as Gita said was so important, that we, they would be able to build cohesive professional integrated teams delivering high quality care, and that as individuals they would embody curiosity, compassion and courage in the support and leadership that they offered their teams. And the objectives for the training in terms of the knowledge, the skills and the impact are here. And I'll just leave this for a short while for you to take these in. And then the outcomes. So what did we, how did we want those who participated to be different in terms of what they might think, feel or do? And again, I'll just leave these for you to look at. We piloted the training in March of this year with over 200 participants from uh, trust representatives of all sectors of the NHS um, with nursing um, and allied health professional colleagues principally. Uh, it was a four week based online learning programme and then a 90 minute online workshop. In terms of the structure, the online learning programme um, was rich and interactive, lots of videos, but also the ability for them to have discussions, text-based discussions amongst themselves in response to reflective prompts and discussion prompts. Um, the workshop enabled them to discuss the learning, to practice some of the skills that we wanted them to develop around culturally sensitive conversations, and crucially to think about the actions that they wanted to take as a result of the training. I'll talk more about that in a minute. This is um, the headings for the, the um, course, so you can get an understanding of the content. And it's broadly divided into two sections. The first is foundational equality, diversity and inclusion learning. So identity, culture, intersectionality, power, privilege, bias, discrimination. All of that really important and necessary before we even begin to think about what is cultural competence, what is cultural humi humility, some of the theories, models, and, and how you put that into practice. And we also feature quite a, a reasonable section on combating racial discrimination, anti-racism section as well in the course. It takes about five hours to complete that learning on average, so it's quite, quite a lot. The um, evaluation, we did a, obviously a post-course survey to explore the, the materials and the content and the experience that they had, but crucially we also looked at their self-assessment of cultural competence before and after the training because we wanted to see a change and a shift there. In terms of how the course evaluated, it was extremely well received by par participants and here's some uh, statistics and words from the feedback. They told us lots of good things about the course and you can see those here in the strengths. They did point out that it was a little bit uh, too short the time that they got to, to do that five hours of learning and the, the workshop was a little short as well and they expressed an interest in having some face to face although many preferred the online delivery so some flexibility needed there and obviously we've adapted the course in response to this feedback. In terms of that self-assessment of cultural competence, where well, we saw a really significant shift to the right um, here across this, which was, which was great to see. So certainly knowledge of other cultures, um, comfort discussing cultural differences, um, and confidence adapting communication styles to meet the needs of their colleagues from different cultures. Where the, the shifts were smaller, actually, this was because before the course they already uh, scored these very highly, so there wasn't so much of a shift. So we really did see immediately afterwards, at least, um, an increase in their self-assessed cultural competence. Now it remains to be seen whether that would result in um, different behaviours and whether it's persistent at six or 12 months, of course. In the course, we wanted them to complete an activity where they said that they would start, stop and continue doing things. So, and here's just some examples of the things that they said that they would start to do as a result of this training. So I'll let you just take this in. Here are some more. This was really important. We were really keen that this was not just a training 
course that people did and that it resulted in meaningful change in action that made a difference for internationally educated colleagues who were working in the NHS and here's some evidence of people's commitments to make doing things differently and they broadly fell into three categories either they wanted to go and share the learning that they'd done with colleagues or they wanted to adjust their individual behaviours in terms of how they led their teams and interacted with people or maybe they wanted to get involved with policies and processes within their organisations as well. So I'll just finish with some quotes. These are from uh, participants in the pilot. We have to acknowledge the data from surveys of internationally educated nurses, but also res data tells us that we've got this persistent problem with inclusion um, and equality and equity within the NHS. And that's on the background of having been doing training packages like this for 20 years. You know, I've been working in the NHS for that length of time and I've been doing my mandatory training in EDI for that length of time and as, as, as has everybody. So something hasn't been working up till this point. Um, we're really really conscious of that coming into this, hence designing a really comprehensive and robust program that takes a long time to complete, that is action focused and has that workshop element as well. So, you know, you're looking at between seven to, to 10 hours, probably total learning. Um, and uh, for it to be really linked to people's lived experience, and it does seem from the evaluation to have changed people as a result and that their behaviours will change. Now, my concern is, OK, is it still will there still be change six, 12 months down the line? Um, but also, more importantly, just focusing on the in immediate line managers doesn't address sort of whole organisation culture necessarily. So um, building psychologically safe, culturally safe, and culturally competent like environments is about all staff at all levels within an organization so it's great that we're not focusing on the deficit model like Gita said where we're saying so here we're saying actually maybe part of the problem is the line managers don't have cultural competence and let's skill them up um, but I think we need to think more widely about that within the organization this is specifically targeted at, at, at ward manager sort of level band mm -hmm. six band seven line manager level and I think that's the point I was trying to make was that that they've had a great experience, but then maybe they'll come back and talk to their managers about this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to embed the changes unless everybody's done the training. But this is this is targeted specifically at that group. I think it's about having a strategy that recognises that developing cultural competence, uh, it, it's at every level of the organisation, and it needs to be maybe different at different levels, but, but it's about a whole organisational approach. And I think it's really crucial that leaders understand, properly understand the lived experience of internationally educated colleagues. And that can come from reciprocal mentoring, like we mentioned, can come from watching videos, can come from getting onto the ground and talking to colleagues, can't it? So uh, I think that's just really, really crucial.